Hi and welcome everyone. My name is Salaf Allahiri and I'm back to show you how to configure Visa and Stretch Cluster. But before starting, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. In this video, I will briefly discuss about Visa and Stretch Cluster architecture and use cases, Visa and Stretch Cluster requirements, and as always, a quick demo to show you how to implement Visa and Stretch Cluster. So without further ado, let's get to it. VSAN Stretch Cluster introduced in VSAN 6.1 and it brings high availability in active active fashion. In this architecture, ESXi hosts would be placed into different physical locations and joined together with a high bandwidth, low latency network. But from management perspective, despite hosts are in two different sites, they are belong to one single VSAN cluster and share their resources. So this solution can be used in the environments that disaster avoidance is a critical matter because it gives you the ability to avoid disaster or recover from a disaster by having two different physical sites that host your applications. Meaning, if you have planned a maintenance for one site, your applications are available in the second site too. So you need to group the host based on their physical locations and put them into different fault domains. But what is fault domain? In a very quick and simple definition, fault domain is a boundary of failure. This boundary could be a single host, a rack, or a data center. In a stretch cluster, the boundary of the failure is at the data center level. And when we want to mitigate the failure, we need to define the failure to tolerate, which affect the placement of the objects. And by this, we make sure the data components or the replica of the data are not going to end up in one single host or a single site. By thinking about how many nodes do we need to satisfy the failure to tolerate, for example for RAID 1, we need to have at least 2n plus 1 node to satisfy RAID 1 failure to tolerate method. One node for data, one for the replica, and a third node is a witness to satisfy the quorum requirements in a split brain scenarios. Meaning, one component is one host and the other component is on the other host, we need to determine which one of those components is allowed to serve the IO operations. And when we talk about configuring explicit fault domains at the data center level, our concern is not just the number of nodes but to have two active active data sites and one witness site to protect the VMs across data centers. But what are the use cases? The first use case is to plan a maintenance in one site without having any downtime. Or in case of service outage, for example, if a power supply fails before affecting the applications by using vMotion, VMs could migrate to the other site. And lastly, if we have an unplanned outage, virtual machine restart to the secondary site with help of vSphere HA. The recovery time objective or RTO is very low, so you don't need a complex orchestration process to recover VMs. In terms of requirements, vSAN stretch cluster is really sensitive about the network connection. Bandwidth between data sites has to be at least 10 gigabit per second and the latency has to be less than or equal to 5 millisecond round trip. Network link between data sites can be layer 2 or layer 3. But despite supporting layer 3, VMware recommends to use layer 2 links between data sites because firstly, it minimizes the number of hops that data has to pass and secondly, when you migrate the VMs to the other side, it's not optimal to change the IP settings. But in case you have any specific requirements to use L3 links, a static route is also required. Because vSAN use default TCP stack, but the new vCenter server UI supports overriding the default gateway for a VM kernel port which later on in the demo I will show you how to configure it. Bandwidth between data site and witness needs to be at least 2 megabit per second per 1000 vSAN components and based on the number of hosts per site, latency could be less than 200 milliseconds for up to 10 hosts, 100 milliseconds for 11 to 15 hosts, and if you only have one host per site, which is basically the vSAN 2 node architecture, latency has to be less than 500 milliseconds. Network link between data sites and the witness site needs to be layer 3 and of course a static route is required too. I highly recommend to check the vSAN stretch cluster bandwidth sizing page, which I will put the link in the description of this video for more information about the bandwidth and the link between the sites. After the network requirements are met, it's also important to distribute the nodes evenly between two data sites. And also you need to have a witness host in witness site which holds the witness components. Witness server could be installed as a dedicated physical ESXi host 
or a specialized virtual witness appliance. The main reason of having witness as a virtual appliance is it doesn't require extra visa for your license. To know how to deploy witness visa, you can read my article on vlms.net, which I will put the link in the description of this video. And lastly, for performance purposes, set the MTU to 9000 if it is feasible in your infrastructure, and keep in mind that you need to change the MTU end-to-end. Alright, as I briefly discussed the storage cluster architecture and requirements, now it's time to walk you through a demo to show you how to configure vSAN storage cluster. In this demo, I have six identical ESXi hosts that they are member of a distributed switch. I have configured management, vMotion, and vSAN VM kernel of the ESXi host except one of them to show you how to configure it. And to save some time, I have already deployed a witness node and added to the vCenter. The network across two data sites for management, vSAN, and vMotion is a stretch layer 2, and between the data site and the witness is layer 3. You can also check this IP addressing example to better understand how you should assign addresses to management, vMotion, and vSAN VM kernel ports. You can pause the video and review the IP addresses more closely. Before starting the vSAN stretch cluster configuration, let's configure the one last remaining vSAN VM kernel and then we continue with the rest of configuration. In the earlier version of vCenter, VM kernel specific gateway was not supported and you had to configure static routes to forward vSAN traffic to the correct gateway. But now it's much simpler. So you only need to choose the ESXi host and from the configuration tab, under networking, choose VM kernel adapters and select add networking. Then I will choose to create a new VM kernel adapter. And as I said, this environment will be managed by distributed switch. So I will choose select an existing network and browse to select the vSAN port group and click next. Here you need to choose the vSAN service and move on to the next page to specify the IP address. So I will type the IP address and subnet mask and then I choose override default gateway for this adapter and add the vSAN gateway, then I will choose next and finish. And to make sure I'm able to reach the vSAN witness from the source of ESXi vSAN VM kernel, I have enabled SSH on the first ESXi host. With VMK ping command, I ping 192.168.55.11 and as you can see, I'm able to reach the desired vSAN VM kernel port of witness. Now I can go further, enable the vSAN feature, claim the hard disk, build two fault domains, and finally add the witness host to build the vSAN stretch cluster. So I go on a cluster level, and from the configuration, under vSAN, I choose services, and then I click on configure vSAN. For configuration type, I will choose a stretch cluster. For this demo, I don't want to enable any services like compression or deduplication. So I click on next to claim the hard disk. I choose the 20 gig hard disk for cache and 200 hard disk for the capacity and click next to configure the fault domains. All ESXi hosts with suffix of dash "-a", are belong to preferred site and I will move the three remaining ESXi hosts with suffix dash "-b", to the secondary site and click next to select the witness host. Here, under data center, I will select the witness host that I have installed and configured, and click next to claim the disks for witness host. I choose the 10 GB hard disk for cache and 15 GB hard disk for capacity and click next and then finish. Normally, at this point, it takes a couple of minutes until vSAN stretch cluster gets configured, so I speed up the video for not keep you waiting. Alright, as you can see, the vSAN data store capacity has been changed to 1.17 terabyte. and if I go on a cluster under Configure, vSAN, Fault Domains, you can see the storage cluster as the configuration type. And also, you can see hosts have been evenly spread across two sites. By this, we reach to the end of this video and I hope you find it informative and enjoy building your own vSAN storage cluster. Thanks for watching!